Cool, so let me get started here. And I'm gonna try, like we're a small group of people, so I'm gonna try to make it a little bit upbeat today. Um, I've got some coffee, I've got a coffee machine behind too. So I'm gonna try to have some some good rhythm here. Um, if someone can tell me to how much time is allocated, I, I'm assuming like half an hour. I'm not sure exactly how much time I should leave for questions, but I'll uh, I'll keep an eye on that. Maybe Justin, if you can, 40 minutes. Perfect. So I'll try to keep the talk like 30 to 35 minutes and then we'll have time for questions. It looks like there are ways for people to maybe ask questions in the poll section. Um, so um, whatever mean you have, at least like think about your questions, write them down. I'll try to keep an eye though. I'm on two tabs now. So um, I'll try and take questions at the end. I think that's going to be easier. Cool. Um, so Apache Superset. Um, so Apache Superset is a data visualization platform. My name is Max. I'm the original creator uh, of Apache Superset. Uh, originally, it was called Panoramics and then Caravel, and ultimately uh, was renamed as Apache, Apache Superset. Um, today, we have a pretty uh, simple agenda. Uh, I'm going to do a demo. It's probably the most important or a more interesting part for the people that are new to Superset. Um, I will talk about the past, the present, and the future of Superset uh, and, and try to touch all the everything that's relevant to the crowd here. So I'm assuming we have people from other Apache Software Foundation communities too. So we'll, we'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the things that we're doing uh, around the communities that we can uh that that can be reproduced to but and and imitated by other communities at apache um so this first slide is a, a bit of a self-intro so a little bit about me um my name is max i'm just uh passionate about building data tools that's what i've been doing in the open mostly under the umbrella of the apache software foundation over the past five or six years um I originally uh, started, I'm the original creator of Apache Airflow that I started at Airbnb in 2014. And a year later, I started uh, Apache Superset at Airbnb too as a hackathon, a three-day hackathon project. Originally, uh, it took a year or so before it got traction and we kind of staffed it at, and really kind of uh, sponsored it at Airbnb. And since then, uh, I've been working and focused very much on Superset full time, uh, and kind of dedicated my my professional career to uh, to Superset over the past uh, five years. Um, more recently, so a little bit more than a year and a half ago, I started I founded a company uh, that's called Preset. That is a Superset centric company. So we build in and around Apache Superset. We offer um, Superset as a service. And we also um, we offer you know, service and support training, um, all that good stuff on everything Superset or related in, in a way or another to, uh, to the project. Um, I worked at a bunch of data forward companies that you see in this slide. Um, so worked at Lyft, Airbnb, Facebook, Yahoo, Ubisoft. I wanted to say I'm super grateful for these companies that are sponsoring open source projects and letting people like me uh, grow communities and, and uh, build open source software. I think it's amazing that we're doing that. I think it's amazing that we have the Apache Software Foundation to enable a lot of that too, and enable that transition from company to company while keeping working on the same project. Right When I went from Airbnb to Lyft, that was a really smooth transition. And effectively, I was still working for uh, for for Airbnb in many ways through um, through open source. So. Uh, very grateful for that. Uh, on the left panel, I took my profile picture from or profile page from GitHub. So I'm Mr. Crunch on GitHub. Um, that's been my home base for a little while between Slack and GitHub. So spent uh, spent a lot of time uh, just working, collaborating people with people directly on GitHub. Uh, let me just check at the comments here to make sure that no one is writing something like we we can't hear you or. Uh, uh, so it looks like everything is going. If people don't complain in the chat, I'll assume that everything is going well. Uh, I see we're about 30 people now. Cool. Back to the slide. So 
Um, so Apache Superset is a data visualization and data exploration platform. Uh, it's very much a, uh, a full-on kind of web application where that you can install in your organization, connect to your databases. It's very much a uh, an alternative to things, uh, to proprietary tools like Tableau, Looker, uh, Chartio, right? So it's a place where you can connect to your databases, perform all sorts of analysis, uh, visualize data, share data, assemble dashboards, uh, write SQL. Um, so here you see a little bit of the gallery. If you go on our website at superset.apache.org, you'll see the same gallery and it's a little bit more interactive where you can actually uh, zoom in to all these pictures. Uh, so Superset is dashboard and a dashboard um, dashboard editor and a, a place where you can create and share dashboards. It's a place where you can um, explore data and kind of slice and dice in a kind of web form, um, you know, drag and drop style interfa interface where uh, you can connect to different data sets and uh, pick different visualizations, uh, apply filters, pivot, you know, so all this whole like code free slice and dice kind of analytics at the speed of thought. Um, and it's also a SQL IDE where you can kind of prepare data sets. Uh, write some SQL, so do things that um, are a little bit harder to do in the slice and dice type interface, uh, where you can, you know, join data, create data sets, union data sets, um, and all this good stuff. And it's also possible from here to pivot into the exploration mode, where uh, you can visualize things and assemble dashboards from SQL. Um, it's also geospatial, so. Um, I spent a year at Lyft with a, an amazing uh, team there working on real-time and geospatial. Uh, so we got a good integration with a, a super cool library out of Uber that's called DegGL. And uh, we built all sorts of awesome um, geospatial integration features inside Superset. I think I'll be able to show that a little bit during the demo. Um, Superset is also many visualizations. Um, so we have this long tail of visualization. It's a bit of a patchwork of all sorts of D3 and, and different libraries uh, visualizations that are made available under the same umbrella. Uh, and recently, I'll talk some more about that, but we kind of formalize an interface for uh, visualization plugins. So, so that's a way that you can um, extend Superset with plugins. Um, that uh, suit your needs, something that uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to plugins in, in a moment. Uh, and also, so um, so Superset is also a full-fledged web application. So that means you can kind of pick your auth authentication scheme, whether you're interested in things like uh, RBAC, OpenID, uh, username, passwords, uh, and set your own role-based access control. So we have very atomic, maybe too atomic, um, uh, permission scheme where where you can really define what different people can do in the application and what data data and data sets they do have access to um, through Superset. It is also cloud native, so that means uh, you can run it on the database of your choice for the metadata database, whether it's Postgres or Postgres or or, or Postgres or maybe MySQL. But uh, but yeah, so you can pick you know uh, the different uh, pieces of infrastructure you want to run superset onto, uh, which uh, web server you want to run, which message queue, uh, and uh, which caching mechanism you want to use uh, for the data sets. Um, it is extensible through plugins. Uh, what I was going to say here is that with these plugins, you can build, uh, you can add new visualization, but you can also build like little applications as plugins, which is really interesting. So you can do things that are more sophisticated. Uh, we're really curious to see what the, now that we formalize the interface to see what the community is going to come up with. I think we should uh, be seeing like more specialized visualization, maybe like genomics or maybe things that are very um, industry specific. So we're excited to see the, the ecosystem of plugins growing. Um, it is also increasingly, and that one is a little bit more aspirational, but a platform to build data products. So that means that Superset exposes its building block to do other things with it, uh, including if you wanted to tap into the Superset backend that knows how to talk to analytics database, it knows how to handle things like ca uh, caching, auditing, authentication, permissions, right? So. If you're building data products internally, you might want to tap into some of the layers and the building blocks that uh, Superset offers, including, I think, uh, you know, a set of 
uh, React and visualization components. Um, Superset is also a thriving community. So this is the insights page from our GitHub, and it shows that we've merged about like just about 200 pull requests over the past month, uh, which is crazy. Uh, it, it's the pace at which um, we're accepting contribution is incredible. We have all sorts of people from different organization, uh, most notably, um, I would say uh, Airbnb, Dropbox, Lyft, uh, preset. We're uh, an increasingly large contributor uh, to the to the project too, and we have like a just a lot of stars on GitHub, uh, and and everything is kind of up the through the roof um, in terms of like how um, fast paced this community um, is and at the pace at which is growing. Um, here, I wanted to talk about uh, full stack um, open source analytics. So. It's really interesting to see how uh, the Apache Software Foundation and beyond. I think here I have mostly ASF logos, uh, but I have Presto too, which is part of uh, two software foundations now, uh, which is really confusing. There's a little bit of a fork in the Presto universe, uh, but I won't get into that. I will just, I wanted to, to bring up this idea that, um, that now there's more offering in the data space with open source and open source and the Apache Software Foundation uh, spon or, or hosted projects are becoming like an emerging stack that covers uh, most most of uh, people's needs, right? So I think in some areas or you know historically you needed a lot more duct tape and chicken wire to kind of get all that stuff to be working well together, but more and more these things are playing well between each other um, and they also play well with the you know the cloud vendors and the things that are more uh, up and coming and from the SaaS world things like in our case you know BigQuery and Snowflake that are um, growing fast so uh, so so these pieces of puzzles are all kind of coming together in a really interesting way and I think one thing I want to talk about a little bit today is open source up the stack uh, which uh, I have a slide here on that doesn't say much, but uh, I wanted to touch on that topic, which I think is is super interesting and and relevant and important to us because we're a slightly different uh, community at Apache where we're building web application and web uh, web tools or or tools that are heavily kind of uh, UX UI driven as opposed to a lot of the, the products um, around that are more infrastructure. So we've seen really um, open source really take over and win the infrastructure layers, things like databases, compute engines, orchestration systems, right? That everyone wants and desires open source down the stack. And, uh, and I've been wondering about why we haven't seen as much open source of the stack. And I've got some uh, a few points I want to touch upon today before I move on into the demo. Uh, one is, I think, like part of, to me, like the value proposition of open source is um, first, it's a better way to write software, and that does uh, and to collaborate on software, right? So, so I think that carries up the stack nicely. Um, and the the other idea is it's a better way to distribute software too. So as someone who consumes software, you can kind of just get clone as opposed to having to you know deal with a vendor uh, and have to attend a webinar and get spam to even see a screenshot of the software, right? So uh, so I think these carry nicely, um, very nicely up the stack. I think some challenges that we've had in the past that prevented open source to succeed up the stack are. One is front end engineering was uh, was not necessarily um, real engineering, right? So the toolkits and the the, the, the jQuery era uh, was rough, and uh, front ends were kind of patched together and hard to um, collaborate on. I think now the front end engineering has has come a super long way over the past five or six years, where uh, with the rise of npm, um, ES6, React, React TypeScript. Um, these things are making front-end engineering real awesome engineering that people can collab like truly collaborate on. So that's one big shift. And the other one is um, integrating. I, th I think open source has been really good at taking engineers and making them collaborate, but it, we've been bad at integrating uh, 
product managers and designers. I think designers being really the, the key, that function of design is super important to build UI and UX. And, uh, and open source and GitHub and our communities have been kind of foreign to, uh, to designers. So at, at Preset, we're really interested in trying to solve that. Uh, and within our community too, we're, we're trying to find many ways to integrate, integrate design as a core function uh, in our community and, and not only offer it, offer kind of design as a service in the community, but also like try to onboard more designers from, uh, from other organizations and get them to participate. Cool, I'm looking again at the chat to see if there is anything wrong going on or if my internet's still up and it seems like things are good. So I'm gonna keep going. Uh, and I wanted to talk here um, a little bit about uh, our published roadmap. So recently we published SIP 53, so Superset Improvement Proposal 53, uh, which is our proposal to create a uh, public roadmap for Superset. Um, we looked around different communities to see how other people, uh, how other communities are doing that and found that very few communities are publishing roadmaps. Uh, so we thought it was a good opportunity to innovate a, a little bit on that. So you can find out more about exactly the mechanics that we were proposing to do this. Uh, this is uh, ongoing discussions today. So we're, we're gonna be voting on that over the next few days. But the general idea is that um, if any, any contributor committer uh, PMC wants to put forward roadmap items to bring into the um, kind of the global roadmap. They're welcome to do so. Uh, the minimum requirement is having a, you know, a title, a scope defined and a rough timeline and um, having an owner for the roadmap element. And everyone within the Superset community is welcome to not only contribute to this roadmap, but uh, we find that it's an opportunity to, uh, to create uh, more collaboration in the community. So knowing where this project is going uh, for the same reason that you need an internal roadmap for the products you develop. I think they're very helpful at the community level uh, there too. So I invite people that are interested to check out our public roadmap. You see the GitHub here on the upper left. So that's under uh, Apache Superset, Superset uh, Roadmap. And that's still in a proposal phase and we're welcoming uh, people to kind of give feedback on the process and on uh, the roadmap itself. Um, community, so here, I'm gonna go quickly through this. We're already 20 minutes in, so I wanna save a good 10 minutes for the demo. Um, so community, we're here, I would characterize kind of what we're doing as we're doing most of the things that are expected out of a large growing community. So GitHub is very much a central hub. We have a thriving Slack that's always on uh, we uh, we do committers meeting. We try to accommodate people in different time zone, and we welcome everyone to these committers uh, meeting um, that are usually on Fridays or Thursdays. So if you're interested in that, you can tap into um, our Slack and and get hooked uh, with these committers meeting. We started a champions program, so we found it was difficult for people to um, to become committers. So the path to committerhood. Um, at Apache, I think can be difficult depending on the community. And we felt like in our community, we needed uh, an accelerated path and we wanted to offer more direct support for people that are like, I wanna contribute, but I don't know where to start. Um, and I think really often at, at, uh, at Apache, at this, um, I would call it like the fostering committers, it usually happens within sponsoring organizations. Uh, but it's hard to see the new organizations that want to get involved and people really need to to push. Um, there's this thing in open source where I think there's a lot of people that feel the imposter syndrome. They feel like this is a kind of big stage that's hard to get into and that people are going to judge them. So we really wanted to create an on-ramp for people who wants to contribute more. Uh, check out, uh, you can learn more about the Champions program. Probably, I, I would say on our Slack to get more information, there's a channel dedicated to this, I believe. We send a monthly newsletter. We've redesigned our website. We're doing uh, regular meetups. So we're doing um, all the things that, um, that you know, great open source uh, large communities are doing nowadays. And to find links to these resources, I would say, go to superset.apache.org. There is a community page that should have links to all of these resources and more. 
Cool. So demo. So let's see how this goes. Last time I was on, I think I was running local. This time around, I'm not running local. And I believe I'm going to have to come here and uh, share another screen here. Um, so Chrome tab, I'm sharing a different tab. And uh, it should be right here. So now I'm going to ask you, do you see my screen? The question of, uh, I was going to say the hour of, of the past six months. Do you see my screen? Yes. Great. All right. Now I can keep going. All right. So now I landed on the welcome page of Superset. This is a list of dashboards. So I think I'm going to take you very quickly. I'll just pop a few dashboards. So starting with um, our community metrics. This one I built this weekend uh, on top of Big, BigQuery open data. Uh, just for fun. And I think I'll start with just these two dashboards. Oh, and I pop them in different tabs. So that's not going to work. So I'll just not pop them in different tabs and just navigate. All right. So this is our Superset Community Metrics uh, dashboard. And I know that Hopin takes a lot of resources here. So I don't know um, how well that's going to go. And I don't think I have a fallback, do I? All right, it looks like we're we're loading slowly. Uh, usually these dashboards look pr load pretty quickly. Uh, let me just look at my top console to see how my CPU, Google Chrome is at you know, two hundred percent. All right, so we're gonna. I think that should go pretty well. Okay, maybe. All right. Um, so this, of course, I tested and it worked very well before hopping on. So let me uh, do a little bit of a tour here. So, uh, so here you can see that we have like you know these dynamic filters here that uh, that we can apply. So we have these interactive dashboards uh, here. Digging into the community metrics here, you can kind of see the different organization contributions, uh, number of PRs to date, stargazers. Um, the recent leaderboard of people and how many PRs and comments and reactions. Uh, you know, we can see over the past uh, who has had the most uh, reactions or comments kind of recently. Uh, let's see here. So it looks like I use reactions a lot personally. Uh, you can see the history of contribution, different people, uh, top issues. So just a dashboard and what you would expect in this particular dashboard, we have a little bit more um of interaction where we can look on a specific you know people maybe and in, in here let's me, let me just kind of use uh myself and you can see you know activity from different people um so that gives you an idea of the kind of stuff that, the kind of dashboard that you can build here uh let me go to show another dashboard or two so the other one maybe i'll get into here is uh, and I'll pop this one quickly. So that's uh, one using BigQuery. Oh, by the way, going back to the community dashboard, we published a blog post, or I published a, a blog post on the preset blog around how to get to this exact dashboard. So if you're, you're looking for a, uh, a short project, you can kind of pick up the, the notebook that I published um, and run the same things and like load the, um, the information from your own communities into a superset dashboard and make it work. Um, I would normally navigate to the blog here to show you. Maybe I'll point to a few blog posts while I'm here, and then I'll get back to um, to this afterwards. But <laughs> oops, sorry. let me get the dog out here. All right, Luna, get out of here. All right. This is what happens when you run a conference uh, from your home. All right, so here I wanted to show that you know we have a blog post that uh, that shares this open source dashboard, so you can kind of do the same by you know running, uh, calling the GitHub API, and uh, loading this that this dashboard template in your own local Superset instance. Cool. Um, now going back to the Superset demo. Um, by the way, I wanted to point out to if you're interested in vis visualization plugins, we have this awesome um, post as to um, how to um, put together plugins that's very detailed. 
Um, that's the one here. Uh, so if you're interested in playing, maybe you're looking for a weekend project or a uh, full on little project, you can create your own visualization and you can get to a hello world very, very quickly. And then, you know, pick your own uh, NPM libraries and, and build your own visualization on top of superset. Cool, back into the demo. We should be able to just go here. Nice, and I'll show you, I'll flash um, one, one, more, uh, one more geospatial dashboard. Uh, let's see here. So we're looking at like random data um, over San Francisco here. Um, but you can see that we have like this nice kind of 3D engine to, um, to run queries. Um, going to maybe a chart that's maybe more typical of the kind of stuff that you would do here. Um, let's see, what am I going to show you? Maybe I'll go into um, the World Bank data. here and then uh, i'll show you so we've been in the dashboard so far i didn't show you the editor but you know you can imagine we, we i can click the headed button and and move things around uh now i'm going into uh, this pops into a new window which is going to be interesting let me just share my whole uh browser application window sharing and i believe this is chrome here All right, look at that. We have the tunnel going on. Uh, do people see uh, my screen as I switch tabs? I would love to get like a nice, yep, all right. Um, cool, so now I am more in a slice and dice view. So this is the place where, uh, you know, you point to a certain data set, right? So we're pointing to a, a data set here. We can create the, some, some calculated columns. We can see the columns that's in that table. And we can uh, switch to different visualization type, which I'll probably do in a moment. And here I wanted to show how you can easily point to different metrics, um, apply some filters. So say in this case, I might be interested in adding a filter on a region and say, let's only look at uh, North America and we should only see North American countries. Or I can remove this filter and say, hey, I would like to group, uh, group by a region instead um and visualize this and maybe i don't know i want a an area chart instead um so let me rerun this query and uh maybe i'm interested to look at like what kind of sql was generated here and like noticing that uh, the sql is a little bit complicated i'm like where is there a subquery here uh it's because of this little series limit here where you can say like i only won the top n time series so we do that with a fancy little subquery uh there's also other um all sorts of options here where you can label your axes or use different um, color scheme. Uh, you can uh, here, I don't know, I could uh, write time, you know, and, uh, and, you know, remove the legend, for instance, and publish this either to an existing dashboard or create a new one from here uh, or create a new chart from here. So that shows you a little bit like the Explorer. Um, I'll show you to how, say, like a common thing is you'd probably go from, um, from, from perhaps like a bar to a bar chart or something like that. Um, so, so all of these interactions are pretty um, easy and at the tip of your finger. And then the third part I'm going to show you is uh, SQL Labs. So I showed you how you can kind of view the query from here, but you can kind of go deeper. So we've gone from the dashboard to the slice and dice view, where presumably you can kind of answer some of your own question, create your own visualizations, and then from here. Uh, you can go deeper into what we call SQL Lab, which is our SQL IDE. So from here, uh, you can go and navigate schemas. So here we were looking at a table. Well, let's just look at this table because it's at my fingertips. And you can get some sample data for the table. And here you have a nice little editor where you know you have autocomplete and um, and and you're able to just write the SQL that you need. Um, there's some more advanced features um, here. I think it's disabled in this environment, but you can schedule, share, save. You can also uh, parameterize your your um, your um, SQL if you're working on maybe like uh, 
uh, Airflow script that uses parameters like you know time bounds and things like that. You can uh, you can work on parameterized SQL uh, right in here. So uh, this is the very quick tour. So here you can manage your connection to different databases, uh, manage your data sets, you know, upload CSVs, uh, create of course like charts and dashboard, write SQL, and uh, and here there's a little bit more around like data access templates and other higher level kind of concept that you can use and reuse within the application. So that's the super short uh, crash course. Um, what is, you know, super set about. So I'm going to head back into my slides here and I have a few more slides before we jump into questions. And I believe I am what 35 minutes since I've had a few minutes. So we start, we kicked off graduation recently. Um, so I think we're we're ready and we've been ready for graduation. So we started the process. So this is imminent. Uh, so it's just a matter of doing uh, the, the the paperwork, I believe, or I'm hoping. Uh, we're hoping we can, we're going to graduate very soon. Uh, we started. Uh, we were looking for a new visualization library to have more consistency and have a well managed, maintained um, charting library that we use consistently for the core visualizations. We found eCharts, which is an, another awesome Apache. Software Foundation uh, hosted project uh, that has a lot of traction now too. So we're uh, we connected with that team, and it's really great for us to find another community that has a similar governance scheme and that we're very familiar with, and we know we can uh, we can collaborate with, and we understand um, how they operate. We love like the guarantees. Sometimes it's hard to offer the guarantees that uh, that we need to offer to be part of the Apache Software Foundation, but it's really great to find projects that do offer these guarantees too. Um, we're working on Superset 1.0, um, and it looks like the timeline is uh, until the end of the year or so. So uh, there's a lot to do around quality polish and usability. Uh, visualization plugins have been shipped, but the interface really needs to settle, um, and 1.0 is where we're going to support the interface, you know, for uh, moving forward and and prevent, um, you know, make sure that that we support backward compatibility. Uh, security is a big theme. Um, import and export alerts and schedule uh, deliveries of report of reports, charts, and dashboards. And there's just so much more. There's so much uh, product surface here that uh, really you have to take a look at their roadmap that I linked uh, that I mentioned earlier to see just kind of how much um, Superset 1.0 covers. And with that, I believe uh, that is it. So all the resources that I mentioned uh, should be, uh, you should be able to find through superset.apache.org. And uh, we're really excited to welcome more people in our communities. We want it, we want this community to be the most uh, welcoming around. So uh, please reach out and, uh, you know, we're always happy to um, to onboard more people and find a path forward for people to get more involved in our community. Cool. So that's what I have. And that leaves us, I believe, uh, does that leave us any time for questions? Yes. Five minutes. Um, where do I go? Do I go to the polls? No, that's different. So for question, I suggest people maybe copy paste questions in the chat. Um, and if, all right, awesome. Do you think Superset is better suited with Druid or Pinot for best uh, for best slicing and dicing? So um, I, I've been talking about uh, analytics at the speed of thought. I think it's really awesome where you can be engaged with a data set and interact with it and ask it, uh, the questions and get answers as you go. Um, for that, you either need a small data set or you need a database that fits the size of your data set. So if you have a really large data set, um, and you want to get really fast answers, you'll need a fast database, or you'll need a bunch of summary tables, right, that, that have been like prepared and created for you. So, um, so for large data set, as you hit, you know, the, the hundreds of millions or the billions of rows, um, having kind of in memory, uh, reverse bitmap index, the kind of stuff that, you know, Druid and Pino offer, um, is great, but if you have the data sets that we expose or, you know, um, the ones I've been playing with, uh, say the COVID data set or like a lot of um, toy data sets out there are pretty small. They fit in memory and they're they're pretty interactive even with, uh, 
with a small Postgres database. So it really depends on the size of your data, um, what you need. But you know, it's never a great experience to be working with a tool like Superset when the database is just like you know uh, spinning and taking like thirty to thirty seconds to a minute. Um, it, the, the the flow of uh, analysis really breaks down quickly. Um, Let's see, uh, I'm gonna try to touch on Druid specifically, like that our kind of founding story or the crea the, 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 crea the creation story of Superset was bound with Druid. So originally Superset was designed as uh, one of the first like open source Druid UI out there. So that was before they released something called Pivot that they've pulled since then, right? And uh, originally we were really coupled with Druid. Uh, very early in the history of the project, we moved away from that, or not necessarily away. We also work very well with Druid, but we work with just any SQL speaking databases very well. Um, we work, uh, I would say, very, very well with all the popular choices that people are making these days. So things like BigQuery, Snowflake, Presto, um, even um, Redshift is still fairly popular, uh, Postgres, MySQL. Um, we have a list of supported databases and that's just growing, but pretty much any analytics database you can think of, uh, we can connect to. Cool, let's see. Uh, well, will there be a first class uh, Mongo DB support? So I, that's a recurring question that comes all the time. People are like, oh, we have this these big like, you know, document stores or, um, or like key value stores, like things like, you know, even in the Apache, uh, uh, ecosystem. You have things like Cassandra. You have things like you know HBase that that are more um, key value stores with um, key range scan capabilities. So so some of these offer um, SQL engine on top of it um, for Superset. So we really the, the the primary way that we connect to things is through Python's uh, abstraction. One is called DB API, so that's the standard for writing a, Pyth uh, a driver in Python. So that includes things like you know ODBC and uh, JDBC, and uh, and then we need to have a SQL Alchemy dialect, uh, which is just like basically adding a little bit of metadata on the SQL dialect around like hey, how does this specific engine do certain things like um, quotes and um, and key like time functions and things like that. So. Um, so SQL is kind of the way we support very, very well. And then there's a custom native Druid connector, which means you can write pretty much any custom nav native connector, but it's pretty involved to do so. Um, there's, there's all sorts of things that are possible here, but you really need to have an engine that can do grouping uh, and filtering and do the kind of things that uh, SQL does very well. Cool. I'm looking for more questions here, as as there's also uh, answers already, um, and I believe. Um, let's see. We started, so we still have like five minutes or so, I believe. And if there's no more, oh, let's see. E charts also does maps. Do you see a split or overlap overlap in geospatial? We have not evaluated very well, like the E charts uh, map support, and put a lot of work into DeckGL. So I think. Or fairly committed to DeckGL at this point, but the beauty uh, with the plugin ecosystem is that uh, is that people can build their own plugin packs, right? So like right now, there's there's a little bit of a question of like what is what are the core visualizations that the super the core superset community wants to manage and maintain, and uh, and kind of uh, make a first class citizen. Then we're assuming that out there there's going to be a lot of innovation around plugins uh, and that people are going to build all sorts of plugins, some with different level of support and quality or some that are maintained better than others. Uh, but we're very welcoming to, like, say, create a central page that doesn't uh, um, like federates all the plugins and send links to the different plugins and let people decide which ones they want to use in, in their environment. All right, uh, it looks like the next session will be uh, starting soon. So thanks, thanks everyone. Uh, we're available through all sorts of channels. So uh, find us, we're pretty easy to find and we, uh, we love to engage with uh, everyone who will listen uh, about, about Superset Data Viz, um, Apache, uh, we're, we're excited.
All right. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to click the leave button now. So bye.